What's the word, y'all? I think this might be the first night in the playoffs of this season where every single game was an absolute banger. One game ended with a seven-point win, a four-point win, and a game-winning walk-off three. Where do I even start? I'm going to start here by doing a little housekeeping. I know in the last couple videos that the, the microphone or the audio quality hasn't been as great as, you know, you're used to. Sometimes it's crackling slash, slash static in this one. I'm trying to fix it. Um, I did like five tests before I started to film this video, so hopefully it is fixed. And if it's not, then I'll just go buy a new microphone. This microphone cost me like three fifty, so I don't, <laughs> I don't want to replace it unless I have to. And this is my last straw. So I know people have been hitting me up. My apologies. I know I'm a freak when it comes to quality of video, but the fact that that is happening sucks. But I will say, like, I'll get the video done and then notice that it's happening, and I'm upset because y'all know these are genuine, genuine reactions, and like, I can't replicate emotion. That's why, like, I audition. <laughs> We're going to get to the games, I promise. I auditioned for like some parts and some things, and then I realized to myself, I'm bad at trying to replicate emotion. So if you say, Kenny, get excited, I can't get excited unless it's like really me being excited. So imagine me trying to, to reshoot this video where I'm talking about a Joel B game winner. It won't hit the same. So if the audio quality is not up to par, just know that the next one will be because I'll ride my ass over to Guitar Center and drop another 350 on the same microphone. Are right, you ready to get into some games? I'm starting off with Joel B it's game winner. You're probably expecting me to start off on another game, but no, I think the Joel B game winner is the one we got to speak about because boy, 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 what a dominant performance from my guy Joel B, man. James Harden fouls out, I think, in um, in the fourth quarter. So they had an entire overtime where you would expect the Toronto Raptors to win. I actually have the stat right here. The 76ers never held a lead in the 48 minutes of regulation time. They played 48 minutes of basketball, and the 76ers never was up by at least one point. And they won this game. This is how crazy the playoffs is all three today's games showcase how crazy the playoffs can really be man and i was tweeting about this you know sometimes i'll be laughing to the games or whatever and i tweeted wow joel Embiid is ridiculous after the first step back three that he hit the bro had hit a couple step back threes we talk about a seven foot dude that everybody just said not everybody but you know the biggest critics criticizers are saying that man he ain't nothing without his free throws and he showcased today like yeah getting to the free throw line does help because he had nine free throws which is i guess less than what we've been seeing for the entire series but he can do it all over the court. Just, just a complete dominant performance from him, man. Toronto, I feel bad, man, because like I said, you held the lead for pretty much 48 minutes of basketball or held the lead or tied. But man, this, this game is eerily similar to the Brooklyn Nets game on, on the Toronto Raptors side because you had everybody else. The role players stepped up for Toronto and the role players stepped up for the Brooklyn Nets today, but it was the star players. And that's Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet put up stinkers in this one. And it practically ended the series, man. There's no, There's been no team in NBA history to overcome an 0-3 lead and win the series. There's been a few. I'm looking at it right now. There have been a few to come back and force a game seven, but they all run out of gas, man. Um, but I guess Doc Rivers is on the other side, and uh, you know Doc Rivers' rep reputation on 3-1 lead, so maybe he's going ahead and making history. No, man, the 76ers feel like they got this one completely tied up, um, but I got to show love to OG Ananobi, like I said before in the previous video. The guy is just a straight-up playoff performer. Every It seems like every game, he's just hooping his butt off, and I actually saw a tweet that's a bit interesting about OG Ananobi, bro. Let me see if I can find the tweet or find the statistic myself. So according to Stat Muse, in the games where um, Scotty Barnes doesn't play, it's only been six what OG has played. He averages 26 points per game. And I don't know if that accounts for today's game because this might be just a regular season thing. But OG Ananobi is an absolute hooper. Now, if you if you watch my podcast, you know at the beginning of the season we were ranking every – player or every position and I had OG Ananobi at like the number eighth number ninth small forward the entire year because I was projecting that he was going to take that huge leap and though he didn't take that huge leap because um health is always a big thing for OG Ananobi I see it all the time whether it be games like this or games where Scotty doesn't play where he has more responsibility of him hooping but he's a guy that seems like he's very confident in himself and he understands that hey I might not get 18 shots on a normal basis but I know if I did get 18 shots I can put up a 30 piece and that's what he's been doing man I can't be mad at Precious Achua even though he had the two free or he missed the two free throws that would have iced this game because he was phenomenal today um it was like a breakout performance if you want to call it that he was great um this this team was not projected to to even be in this spot so the fact that they're down no three and might get eliminated or will probably get eliminated will get eliminated um it's not that big of a deal man but i want to show a lot of love to philadelphia 76ers bro um there was there, i want to show love to doc rivers too you know like i said he uh he has the most three one leads blown in nba history the twitter opinion slash average nba fan opinion of doc rivers is completely different than like his peer I guess because if you didn't know Doc Rivers was ranked one of the top 15 coaches of all time like that's a real thing um, but I gotta give
give him his flowers, even though, you know, we got the criticism about his blown leads. Or we got the criticism about his rotation because the last play at the end of the fourth quarter or the end of the overtime was magnificent. I don't know how the hell they confused Toronto enough to get Joel Embiid wide open on the shot that he had hit a couple times already today. That's a lot of Doc Rivers. I got to give the credit to, to Mr. Doc. I did see a lot of Raptors fans tweeting at me. People were tweeting at me screenshots of the NBA referee handbook because if you didn't know, so on this play, um, where Joel Embiid got tied up with one second to go on the shot clock with two seconds left in the game. You see where Doc Rivers is? Bro was past half court, past his bench, and almost sending next to Nick Nurse to get this, this timeout call. And people were sending me screenshots of that being illegal, <laughs> literally. Like there's something in the handbook that say that the coach can't leave his own box or whatever, whatever. And if he does, it results in a technical foul and a free throw for the opposing team. And I understand why you why you would tweet me that or just be upset about that being a rule and nobody enforcing it because hey, your season's on the line and your season practically ended with that that next shot. You know how he got that time out. But still, I gotta give a lot of love to JoJo because wow, what an absolute shot, man. We're completely blessed to have this many talented slash very good big men in the in the NBA right now. And you know what? I'm going to say I have um, enjoyed Tobias Harris recently. I know he only ended with 11 points, but the defense has been there. I, you don't pay $35 million a year for somebody to average 11 in good defense. But I'm just saying for Tobias to be Tobias, like I'm enjoying the way he's playing. I wouldn't pay him $35 million to do this. But if you get rid of the contract and just look at the player, I think he's doing okay. And then he had a, a, a game earlier in the series where he was scoring more. So I think he's just fitting into his role. And right now, as long as he's not selling, <laughs> then you're good. So shout out to the 76ers, man. Joel Embiid says he's going for that sweep, and he might get it. I don't know, man. The, the Air Canada Center, is this still that? Oh, my God. It might not even be that, any, that anymore. Um, it was bumping. It was bumping for the majority of this game. So may, maybe they don't get the sweep. Maybe they do. But regardless, it looks like they're going to end that series. Let's talk about Boston because, boy, 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 that defense, we, we knew this, man. This was no surprise, bro. We've been talking about this defense for three months now. But people wonder, how, how would this defense fare against two of the most purest bucket getters of all time? T-Max said they're the most skilled duo in NBA history and Wade and LeBron said yeah I, I I agree with that and and I guess I would agree with it too when it comes to pure basketball skill being able to get a bucket there's not too many people in NBA history that of the size of Kyrie Irving that can do what he do and there's not many people in NBA history that can do what Kevin Durant does both of those players got clamped up they did and Kevin Durant is having I, I don't know if I've ever seen off the top I know there's that one graphic of Kevin Durant shooting slump and it's crazy but other than that I don't have like a memory of Kevin Durant playing this bad he ended with 27 points because he got to the free throw line 20 times but shooting four for 17 he ended with five assists but six turnovers and five fouls he was in Alcatraz and that was a heavy dose of Jason Tatum I meant to talk about this in, in the first game recap but it somehow slipped my mind at how great of a deep defensive monster Jason Jason Tatum has been in this series so far dude is incredible and today he didn't even have his best score night but if you he hung his hat on the defensive side of the ball and told Kevin Nah, you're not doing that. I vividly remember him getting that, that block on KD late in this game. Another stat, the Nets' first bucket in the fourth quarter came with one, uh, 11 minutes and 38 seconds on the clock, they, and that extended their lead by seven. They wouldn't score again till 6.42 left, and then our next bucket after that was 3.46. They went on a huge, huge slump. And and this is um a lot to do with Steve Nash. It's a lot to do with Kevin, of course, not being able to hit his shots today or being clamped up. This has to do with Kyrie Irving as well. But early in this game, bro, it felt like there was a lot of ball movement. We got a, a lot of Seth Curry catch and shoots. He even had a couple dribble pull-ups. He had, you know what I'm saying, one dribble to the side, three-point shots. Bruce Brown started off hot, scoring the first nine points of the game, and he was doing his thing. And then we got to that fourth quarter, and, and bosses started to go on this little run, and then it was like... All right, now we're strictly isolation. I'm just, listen, I'm, I'm never, ever, ever going to tell Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving they shouldn't be isolated. But I will say the shot's not going. How about we go back to what was working for the first two and a half quarters? You know, they were up by, I think, 18 points in this one when we were when they were allowing Bruce Brown to do his thing on the short roll and hit his threes. Three, three out of four for Bruce Brown from three is, is legendary. You need to win that game. Or when they were allowing Seth Curry to move around and get to the point where he was catching the shooting. But the fourth quarter was so isolation heavy. I hate it. And it's not just a Brooklyn Nets thing. Like, we see this in the NBA all the time. You know, teams are run good sets and boom 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 then we get to the last possession of the, of the game and they're like okay put the ball in our best player's hand and let him do his thing it didn't work today and a lot of that is credited to the boston celtics because that defense was ridiculous 
people were wondering, is this defense that was the best of all time? If you get rid of the first two months of basketball, is it really that nice? And through the first two games of the series, it has been. It legit has been. Where, yeah, you had the Kyrie Irving game in game number one, but other than that, nobody else has been able to get anything going on the Brooklyn Nets side of the ball offensively. And then also, like I said, there's a game where Jason Tatum, and, and, and did, like he struggled, he didn't have a good offensive game. But you had Jalen Brown stepping up late in the third quarter in the fourth quarter. Al Horford has been amazing in this series so far. And Daniel Tice. Me and, me and my fiance were watching this game in the front room and she said, that's Daniel Tice, right? I said, yeah. And as I said that, he hit all backboard in the shot. And I don't know if he missed another shot after that. Great defense. Hitting his shots. We got to give our credit to the bench as well because it's been a one, one of the things that has been um, about the Boston Celtics. The defense is great. The starter five is great. But after that, what do we get? Well, today we got um, uh, Peyton Pritchard hitting a bunch of shots. Today we got Grant Williams having a near perfect basketball game. 17 points, 4 for 4 from the field, 3 from 3 from 3, 6 for 6 from the free throw line, 6 rebounds, no assists because why would he pass the ball? He's there to shoot shots and play good defense and he did that two blocks. Um, shout out to the homie Grant Williams. This was just an amazing performance by the Boston Celtics showcasing to the world, we don't need to hide from anybody. We'll face anybody whether it be in the next round or whatever. The series is far from over obviously, but this these are statement wins if you ask me because the, these this Brooklyn Nets team is one that a lot of people pick to win this series or a lot of people pick to make a run and you made them look trash. I know it's a close one, but you made them look trash when the minutes mattered the most and that was that fourth quarter. And you did it in the last game as well. You've made the best score in the NBA, maybe the best score of all time, look average. I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say other than that. So shout out to him, man. I need the Brooklyn Nets to fight a little bit harder, man. I, I'm loving this series so far. I can't, it can't end like this, bro. It can't be no, no complete sweep type thing and no i'm not, kevin Durant and kyrie not going with a sweep but they have to win a couple games bro they're going back home um and they they got to keep that two at home and then it's basically a new series but i don't know bro the way boston is playing and, and you know what before the series started um people were showing the graphics of the brooklyn nets clutch offense which was like top five in the entire league and the boston celtics clutch offense and it was like bottom five in, in the nba and people were like man you better hope boston uh beat them by 40 every night because if it gets to a close game they don't stand a chance and both of these games have been very very close within the one or two possessions down to the wire and boston have won these and i was trying to explain to people on the pod and in, in, in our uh group chats and our parties that those stats that you're seeing from the boston celtics are extremely skewed because they played majority of their clutch games in the first half of the season the first two months of the season where they were ass so yeah their clutch offense numbers look terrible because they had games where they were giving up 20 point leads in fourth quarters they didn't even play enough clutch games in the second half of the season because they was dominating by 20 every night i believe that those clutch numbers wasn't wasn't a good indication of what they could be in the clutch and they haven't been so far so shout out to the boston celtics and let's talk about the bulls man the bulls even up a series we steal home court advantage bro which is dope man it was this was a great feeling basketball game for me man it, it's it's been a long time like I've mentioned this plenty of times in this channel before um five years six years since the Bulls have been in the playoffs and I'm just so excited they're even here so anything that is a win just feels great you know what I'm saying and and the Bulls I can I guess I can say this confidently even though they lost game one they've outplayed the Bucks this series I know again I know they lost game one but I believe that they out, they've outplayed the Bucks this series. And I don't think this is going to last because I do believe that the Bucks are the better team. I hope Chris Middleton is not injured injured. I don't wish injury on anybody, even if you are the opponent right now. I like Chris Middleton. He's one of my guys. So I hope he is healthy. I hope Bobby Portis is going to be all right after the scratch to the eye or whatever it may be. But like people expected me to be like jumping off the roof or tweeting videos of me screaming into the camera. Nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm excited for sure. I'm happy that we won this game. But it's not... It's a game in a best of seven series. Imagine me, ah, and then we lose the next three. Like, why, what was that even for? You know what I'm saying? I'm still, like I'm saying, I'm still enjoying it, but I don't need to be out there acting crazy. Shout out to DeMar, man, because after game number one, people were tweeting the DeMar DeFrozen thing. Actually, hold on. The people that commentated this, this game on national TV, TNT, had the worst chemistry I've seen in a nationally televised game. Tell me I'm wrong. They had the worst chemistry. And one of the dudes was calling DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeFrozen, like it was a damn compliment. DeMar DeFrozen. Frozen is <laughs> bro that's that's not a compliment my boy they making fun of DeMar you he said it like 90 times because DeMar DeRozan was really taking over that game shout out to him every time he hit a shot the frozen DeRozan he's ice cold no bro they call him that because he he be ice cold in the other way not Trey Young cold but like damn I'm 0 for 6 cold <laughs> so whoever's commentating this game don't put these two bros on don't put them on TV together bro I'm not saying that they not good at their job but them two together 
could not happen. There was a lot of times it was literally dead airspace where somebody's at the free throw line and there was nothing being said. And I thought I was watching a damn baseball game. I thought I was watching a baseball game. Nobody giving me no color commentary. We're not going satellite reporting. It's just like, what, what is happening in this one? Uh, but the Bulls went huge, huge recovery game from Nikola Vucevic. And, you know, in, in game one, Vucevic wasn't bad. He just didn't shoot it great. Today, he shot it great, and the, the rebound was there, and the defense was cool. Listen, there's nobody in this league right now, at least on the Bulls roster, that can stop Giannis. But they gave him hell. Um, They gave him hell. They did not let those points come easy. He ended up with 18 total free throw attempts. I didn't even realize it was that many. It felt like a lot, but I didn't think it was that many. Um, And... Do two games, bro. Chris hit a couple shots down the stretch before he went out with his injury um, that made me kind of grimace a little bit because I think at one point we were up by 18 and we only ended up winning by four. Regardless, he had some shots. He got injured. And um, Drew Holiday hasn't been himself either, and they're getting little to no bench production. A lot of that is because Bobby Portis got injured very early on, and he is their bench production. Uh, but the Bulls have to take advantage, similar to what I said about the, the Pelicans yesterday. When, it's, when a player goes down, that don't mean you just gonna necessarily win the game. You still have to take advantage, and the Bulls did that. Patrick Williams was great today bro we talked about him um being afraid of the moment and afraid to take the shots in game number one not today zach levine played his role he played he played like a role player that's not a knock because that's what we needed him to do today he was hella efficient he wasn't trying to force the force the uh the thing like we sometimes see demar uh, uh zach levine do especially when the other teams are on the run he he think that oh i gotta go do it myself he did not do that today he was the storm but the real mvp of course demar de rose at 41 and he deserves all the love right now alice caruso is a absolute menace what a game from alice caruso a nine 9.10 assist game you would have thought that he was an all defensive player which he, he might have been if he didn't get injured and missed 40 some 40 games of the season he was all over the place bro he ended with two blocks two steals it was way more than that bro he was incredible possessions where he was guarding drew possessions where he was guarding chris possessions when he was stopping Giannis. like he was ridiculous and it felt like anytime he wasn't on the floor the bulls uh let the other team go on a run because that's he is our defensive player at this point like legitimately he's our defensive everything at the moment so uh when he went out of the game to get his little breather i was i was grimacing bro because i was like hey there ain't no way we can stop the bucks if they get that momentum but we did bro that momentum and i think it was late third quarter early fourth quarter scared me quite a bit we pulled out that victory man pulled out that victory i guess neither of the teams had much uh bench production but i'm happy that the bulls won this game bro you know what's wild i just so i uh, do i want to tell a story i'm gonna tell a story somebody in my family this morning texted me and said put 300 on the bulls money line right now at that point the bulls were uh plus Plus 410, I think, to win the game. I didn't do it because I didn't think the Bulls would win. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I love my Bulls, but I'm also a realistic basketball fan. And the Bucks are a better basketball team. And three hundred dollars is a lot of money to be betting on something you don't even personally believe in. I think the payout was uh a stack and and two hundreds, I think. I think. And now I regret not being able to do it though. Or not doing it. Bro, that would have been crazy, bro. We would have been up. Everybody would have been feasting. We've been at stake for everybody. Um, but I'm happy, man. This this was a great three slate of games. Um, I'm excited to see um how the Bucks retaliate. Um again, I hope that Chris Middleton is is healthy. They said that he's going in for testing tomorrow, or I think maybe tomorrow thursday my days are blending together he's going in for testing so i hope that comes back um good enough where he's not done for the series or something like that and yeah bro what a slate of games bro let me know which one of these games was your favorite appreciate you peace